That is how you are going to create English practice environment. A powerful practice environment for yourself using these four techniques that I've told you today. These four techniques will help. Hello everybody. How are you all? Hope you're doing great. So welcome back to another session of learning English and speaking fluent English with me. So today's session is going to be an awesome session. Why? Because I'm going to tell you something very important for you to practice English and improve your English. That is to create the perfect practice environment. Because this practice environment decides how much of this practice is going to be effective or the intensity of the practice that you're doing, the results that it will yield. That's very important. So your perfect practice environment is here. I'm going to tell you how to create it. You can create it at your home. So are you all ready with me? I'm Shivangi Gupta, your CELTA certified English language tutor, certified by the University of Cambridge, the UK. And before beginning, please subscribe the channel so that you can get all the lessons that I upload for you on this channel. Please like the video and share it with your friends too. Now, coming back to today's lesson that is to create the perfect practice environment to create perfect English practice environment now this practice is mostly speaking practice but we will also target reading listening the complete English practice so that we can get that environment where we are comfortably practicing and improving our English so your perfect English environment I am going to tell you four ways four techniques through which you can create a perfect practice environment and practice without much efforts. So are you all ready? Let's begin with all the four techniques. So the technique number one, technique number one is to use something that I love a lot that is use these sticky notes to create that environment. Using sticky notes. Now, how you can create a practice environment using sticky notes? Well, I'm not asking you to label anything. We did that already. We've covered that a lot of times in our lessons to label things around yourself. So I've told you that you have to label things. But what I'm going to tell you today is totally different. This is not about labeling things. It's actually about taking a sticky note. For example, you took a particular sticky note. You took it. Now you wrote something. You can write a topic, you can write a word over here, anything, and you have to paste it. You can paste it at a particular place. For example, you have taken a particular wall and you've pasted all your sticky notes, say five to 10 over there. What you can do is you can also spread them out. You have pasted almost 10 sticky notes around your home. Maybe one in drawing room, one in dining room, two, three in your bedrooms, one in your study room, randomly throughout your in the stairs, on terrace, wherever you want, you have spread them out. And whenever you pass a sticky note, whenever you see something on it, for example, if I write clouds here, so you have to speak something related to it for a minute. You, as soon as you see the topic or the word or any kind of prompt, I would say these sticky notes are the prompt for you to do your speaking practice. Now, this is an awesome technique, awesome technique. Why? Because you do not have to actually spend hours and hours and you don't have to prepare. You don't have to do anything much. You're just passing by your I caught one sticky note there and you just saw that there is written this particular topic, this and this, your favorite movie, maybe uh, your last weekend, anything. And you start speaking on it as your speaking practice. So that is a part of your speaking environment, your practice environment. Now, can you see how habitual you will become of speaking English and of doing your speaking practice through this particular technique of sticky notes? We can use these sticky notes in various ways. And I always come up with a lot of ways. You must have seen different videos of mine where I'm telling you how to use them for your vocabulary, how to use them for thinking in English. I tell you a lot of methods and today I'm going to tell you a cheat code through which you can use them and through which you can improve your English speaking practice and do your speaking practice, obviously, right? 
so yeah paste these sticky notes and what you have to do is you have to replace them after a week for example for a week you are speaking on these topics if you're passing it by okay for example like i told you the last weekend this is the particular topic you've written on a sticky note you've pasted it you passed by it for one one time you've done your speaking practice now for that particular day it's okay not to take up that topic but if you are randomly walking by that particular sticky note or you come face to face with that sticky note or that sticky note just caught your eye you have to practice the very next day that means for the seven days it's not like that you have to just practice all of the sticky notes for one time no every day each day however many sticky notes you can take up and practice do that do that and that is going to boost your speaking skills a lot it's going to give you a positive speaking spirit and you are going to speak so well at the end of for example a month or maybe two weeks three weeks you'll see that you are now developing a habit to practice english something you were reluctant to do something for which you were saying that i'm not getting time or i'm not able to sort out my schedule and all that so the thing is that you have to take out the time and for this it's just like you have to do it for two to three minutes, one minute, you have to speak on a topic, you are just walking and you can just stand there, speak, and then just do your work, whatever you were doing, continue with the task that you were doing, your day-to-day -day task, your daily task, not the English one. So you were doing something, it caught your eye, just do your practice and continue doing your work. That is the thing. And this is an awesome way to create English practice environment at home. Technique number two. Technique number two is to create a practice corner. Create a practice corner or a particular practice space. Basically creating an English practice corner or creating a particular practice space, English practice space is important. Why? Because as soon as you're in that space, now it's compulsory for you to do your practice or to speak in English, to do tasks in English. Now this is a compulsion. If you do not create such a particular corner, you will always find this kind of excuse when to practice, where to practice, what to do. But that particular corner, if you've created, if you've just dedicated it to your speaking practice, that particular corner will always motivate you to do your speaking practice, to do your other English practice, maybe related to vocabulary, reading, listening, writing, whatever task you're taking up for the day. It will motivate you to do it, complete it, take up the task. You'll find less excuses and more motivation to complete whatever you have to for that particular day. So you'll be able to achieve your English goals that you've set. You must have set some goals for the week, for the days, and that particular area will help you keep motivated, keep you motivated to do it. It will encourage you to do it. Because once you are in that particular area, in that corner, in that zone, what will happen is your mind automatically knows that, okay, this is the time I'm going to do English speaking practice. And you will feel less of the distractions. Believe me, you'll find that distractions don't matter anymore. They do not matter anymore. So the thing is that distractions won't matter because your focus would be on your English speaking practice. So this is a great way to create a particular focus to boost your motivation, to achieve your English learning goals. It's very important to create that particular corner. Now, now I'm not saying that you have to be extravagant about it. You have to go out of your way, create a corner, like do this, decorate it, this and that. No, you can simply assign a place, okay? It can be your study table and chair. You can assign that place as your English practice area english practice corner it can be any corner of your home it can be maybe a corner of your drawing room that is very beautiful and often you might want to sit there and read and do things so that is what you can create something where you are really happy something where you feel positivity you can create that particular space you can convert that particular space into your english practice space so do that for yourself, do that and you'll see that it's going to do wonders for you. You'll also find time to practice, you'll be practicing more often and it's going to yield greater results, hence more fluency. So do this. Technique number three is, technique number three is to keep practice material with yourself. Keeping practice material, 
some kind of English practice material. So what you can do is you can surround yourself with that English practice material. Whenever you are there in that practice corner, you're practicing, you can do something like you can keep more and more practice material there so that that environment also becomes stronger in its vibes. It can give you more of the positive English vibes so that you have more material there. Because there is more material, you have more options to select something. For example, listening material, reading material. You can keep journals so that you can do writing practice over there. So that's very motivating if you surround yourself with English practice material. So now when I say English practice material, that means you must have some songs handy with you that you know I have to listen to this particular song. If you're just wasting your time searching for a particular song in English, what to listen, what to do, that's kind of a waste of a time, obviously. You're not practicing. You might think that you have given so much time, dedicated so much time to your English practice, but nothing has actually happened because a lot of your time has gone into selecting things, doing this, doing that. That is why it's very important to keep all these learning materials, practice materials handy. Keep them handy so that whenever you want, you can select something quickly and you can start practicing. This will boost your practice. Practice time, how often you're practicing, it's so gonna improve. You are going to practice more often because now you do not have to worry about what to study, what to practice, what to do. You have a particular material from which you are going to select something. Now you have to keep some songs handy. You have to keep some listening material handy like podcasts. You can select some videos, some YouTube channels maybe, or movies, shows. You can buy more English books. It can be magazines, it can be novels, it can be nonfiction, anything that you love. It can be comics. So you have to surround yourself with English practice material, English learning material. More books, more videos to watch, more listening material, and you can also keep some journals, like I've told you. Keep a journal so that you can pick it up and start writing. Whenever you want to do your writing practice, you have that journal in front of you. And this will also remind you that do your writing practice from time to time, which is very important. It is important. So a variety of materials. Now, how to do that? How to keep that particular thing selected beforehand? So books you can go and buy, you can purchase, you can keep some ebooks on your Kindle device if you have one. So that is one option with you. Another thing is what you can do is you can select every week, okay? At the end of every week, you have to select for the coming week. You can do it on Saturdays and Sundays, selecting the material for the next week. Now, from where to get them, you have so many recommendations by me on songs, web series, TV shows, cartoons, materials to watch, to listen, and to improve your English. I'm recommending you ample and ample of stuff here on YouTube. So you can go check out the lessons, the playlist. Please go check out. From there, you will get so much material through which you can learn English. English learning resources. Okay, so they act as kind of learning resources, natural resources. They're authentic. That means you are learning English from almost natural, natural resource. Okay, a material that is naturally made. You do that, you practice and you improve your English. Technique number four. Technique number four is to dedicate some English only time. Dedicate some English only time. That means keep an English only time. It can be half an hour. It can be an hour. So it depends on the kind of schedule you have, how much time you can give to English. Depending on that particular time, give at least 20 minutes to one hour for English only time. But if you're keeping English only time, like the thing is that whatever you're doing in that particular time, you have to do it in English. That must be minimum half an hour. And you can go up to one hour, two hours if you want. Two hours is the maximum amount of time that I would say. Do not drain yourself. So what you have to do is, within this particular time frame, that English only time frame, you're going to speak in English with anybody, with your parents, your siblings, anybody, your friends, your classmates, your roommates, wherever you're living, whatever you're doing, you're going outside, you have to speak in English. If it's an emergency, like you are supposed to speak in your native language, that is an exception. Except for these exceptional cases, you have to speak in English. 
totally in English. You have to listen to English material. That means you have to listen to English songs. If you want to listen to a song, you're going to listen to an English song. You're going to read a book that's in English. You are supposed to do everything in English. This is going to help you boost your practice environment. English practice environment. In turn, this is also creating an English speaking environment for you because you're constantly speaking in English for this amount of time. It's like a win-win situation. It's creating a complete English environment, not just practice and speaking environment, but a complete speaking environment, both external and internal, right? External is the things that we do outside. For example, watching, listening, reading, right? And the thing is that the internal environment automatically gets affected. It automatically is influenced by whatever we are doing. So if you are creating an external environment of English, definitely your internal environment, that is your thinking process, is going to be in English. That means it's a win-win situation. Obviously, it's a win-win situation because you are creating an overall English environment for yourself. That is beneficial in the long run. It's going to help you develop your fluency, not only just English speaking skills, but boost your fluency, boost your overall English. It's very important. So dedicate some English only time. So that is how you are going to create English practice environment. A powerful practice environment for yourself using these four techniques that I've told you today. These four techniques will help you not only improve your speaking skills, but also become fluent in English. So improve your English, create a perfect English environment for yourself, the perfect practice environment, improve your English and speak English fluently. That's it for today. That is it. That was the lesson. Now I'm going to meet you again with a new lesson. Till then everybody, take care and bye.